Church family, it's Palm Sunday. And as we come to the close of Lenten season, please don't forget to connect with your family group in order to partake in the Lord's Supper, April 3rd through the 6th. If you can't make it in person, don't worry. We have hybrid opportunities for you as well. And as is our custom, we look forward to a great service on Good Friday with our sister church, the Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church, right here in the cathedral. We can't wait to see you there. I'm Philandria Wilson. I'm Brian Keith Robeson II. And it's time for your Avenue News. The Wheeler Avenue children are ready to celebrate our risen Savior. Please join them for Victory Parade today at 3 p.m. in the cathedral. Bring your noisemakers and be ready to celebrate. As we approach Palm Sunday and the Passion Holy Week experience, as is our usual practice during Passion Week, we will take the Lord's Supper as a family group, April 3rd through the 6th. Each of our family groups will meet as scheduled Monday through Thursday for our family group supper experiences. Please check the schedule in the newsletter or website to learn of the day, time, and place where your family group will meet, then join them for this intimate experience of fellowship. There will be a hybrid opportunities as well for each family group meeting for those who cannot make the in-person meetings. The Social Justice Ministry reminds everyone that the last day to register to vote for the upcoming May 6th municipal elections is April 6th. Please get registered today in the atrium following each service. Your vote is your voice. Make your voice heard and go vote. The Women's Guild is looking to hit the runway for this year's Audrey H. Lawson Impact Awards Luncheon and Fashion Show. If you are a man or a woman with an outstanding personality, a great attitude, and the ability to make any outfit look good, then you are invited to a model call on Thursday, April 11th at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. No need to sign up, just show up. For more information on the model call or luncheon, please email us here below. We're back and stronger than ever. Young adults, it's time for the situation. Mixing, mingling, and a meaningful message to help you with practical life-changing lessons in a safe, fun, and encouraging environment. Bring a friend and meet us Thursday, April 20th at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. April is National Financial Literacy Month. Join the Financial Empowerment Ministry on Saturday, April 22nd, 2023 for the 2023 Faith and Finance Conference, the Year of Amazing Returns featuring Lee Jenkins, best-selling author, founder, and pastor of Eagles Nest Church located in Roswell, Georgia. This hybrid event will be held both in person and virtually with sessions that focus on budgeting, managing credit, investing, estate planning, and entrepreneurship. To register, please visit the events page at wheelerbc.org or contact empowerment at wheelerbc.org for more details. Attention graduating high school seniors, it is now time to apply for the WABC Educational Grant. The grant application retreat is on April 22nd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and is mandatory. Visit the events page at the website below to view and complete this year's educational grant requirements as well as the application. The application deadline is Friday, May 26th at 5 p.m. All submissions must be made through the website. The Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church Jail and Prison Ministry will serve the community with the second annual resource fair for formerly incarcerated men and women. This year's theme is Breaking Chains based on Acts 16, 25, and 26 and will be held on Saturday, April 22nd from 9 to 1 p.m. in the gymnasium. Free resources will include job preparation and placement, housing services, education and trade school, counseling, clothing, and free food. Spread the word, we want to reach as many formerly incarcerated persons in our community to help them get a fresh start. The Way to Justice presents The Talk, a conversation between youth and law enforcement. This is a conversation between our youth and law enforcement officers to provide students and young adults the tools to use when they encounter law enforcement so that the engagement is a positive one and our young people return home safely. The event is jointly sponsored by Wheeler Avenue Youth Ministry and the Social Justice Ministry. The event will include a panel discussion, breakout sessions, games, and prizes. There's so much taking place, and we hope you stay connected. For more information, follow us on Facebook, Flocknote, Instagram, Twitter, or our app. 
I'm Philandria Wilson. I'm Brian Keith Roberson II. And this has been your Avenue News. And remember, we are Wheeler, wherever. Church family, it's time to celebrate Palm Sunday. to the cathedral or the sanctuary to testify he's alive 
Jesus only. Jesus is Jesus is Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. He's the firm foundation on which I can stand, on which I can trust. Jesus is Jesus is Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. With Jesus only. Jesus only. Jesus only. Jesus only. Jesus is. Jesus is. Because we're going to talk to the Lord for a minute. Come on, keep the same joy and excitement about the name of Jesus, the power of Jesus. Because we want to pray in the name of Jesus. And I just want you to remember that we have some brothers and sisters who especially need our prayer support right now. For our bereaved, we have Deaconess Jacqueline Knox, who will be celebrated on tomorrow at 11 a.m. in the sanctuary. So would you pray for her family? Would you pray also for the family of our sister, Dr. Polly Park Sparks Turner? Her celebration will be Wednesday here at Wheeler Avenue. Visitation begins at 10 and the life celebration will be at 11. As sad as we are when we have to report about death in our midst, let me tell you why I'm still smiling. Because they knew Jesus. And we don't have to mourn as those who have no hope. We can call on the name of Jesus. So wherever you are, whoever you are, you might be on some, some shaky foundation. You might be going through some things. You, you, you just might need the presence of God to show up in your experience. I want to ask you to tune in and let's pray together. Don't just listen to me pray. Let's pray together. Ooh, and believe that God, 
who gave his son Jesus is already on the case, already working something out. So we're going to trust him while we wait. Amen. God, we celebrate who you are. We acknowledge your power and your might. We declare, Lord God, we trust you and we believe that you are the God of amazing things. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blood that was shed at Calvary. We thank you. Oh, we thank you for the nail-pierced hands and the, the crown of thorns. We thank you that by his stripes we are healed. Oh, it's in the name of Jesus we come to you. Believing, oh God, that you have already inclined your ear to hear the prayers of your children. So we can't talk about everything that's represented in the cathedral today. We don't know everything that's going on in Wheeler, wherever land, but we know that you are the all-seeing, all-knowing God. You are omniscient and you are almighty and you are omnipresent. You are everywhere at the same time. And God, we don't have to send you to the hospital. You are there. Jehovah Shammah, show up in all your power and glory and in your might. Do what only you can do and be a deliverer. Break some chains, loose some strongholds. Fill us with your spirit, God we declare that we will believe your word and hold on to your promises today we declare oh God that we exalt the name of Jesus we exalt Jesus as Lord and Savior King of Kings and Lord of Lords and so this Palm Sunday we remember we remember that there is no power in earth and there is no power that is not subject to the name of Jesus Christ. So we thank you now. And ask, oh God, that you will meet every need in the cathedral. Bless the preacher that will stand one more time to declare your word. And we will not hold back our praise. We say with those who said it first, Hosanna, woo, say now, God, in the name of Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We believe you hear our prayers and you know all about how to do something about what you know. So we thank you in advance. We give you glory. We give you honor and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our sister Chase Ryan Booker in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen Take me to the water to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our sister Ryland Chance Booker in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen Bless you, Ryland. 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 None but the righteous Say 
Volume 11. to the great head of the church, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our sister Anastasia Marie Paige Schmidt, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. obedience to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our sister Albria Annalie Schmidt in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen to the great head of the church, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our sister, Jezebella and Elise Schmidt, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. his family. Can his family make some noise? There they are. There they are. They're here for you, sir. Good job, this yeah. In obedience to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother, Caden Charles Booker, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. church, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you our brother Christopher Sean Mouton in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Bless you, Christopher. 
Morning, church family. Our scripture reading will be coming from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 34. You can find it in your Bible or you can watch on the monitors above. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If you are hungry, eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. About the other things, I will give instructions when I come. Let us pause for a moment of meditation. For as often as you eat this bread, and drink the cup. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us remain standing for our hymn of the day. Our 
from the rising of the sun even until the going down of the same he's worthy to be praised hallelujah praise God for this day this Palm Sunday this first Sunday this day where we celebrate Jesus having us on his mind coming into the city we celebrate he decided to die he made a choice hallelujah Blessed be the name. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Listen, we order worship, and I'm not supposed to take up this much time. Y'all y'all ought to quit. Stop. Stop. Just stop and support. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, and Hosanna. It's Holy Week. It's, this is no average season. This is no ordinary time. Listen, they've come from the waters of baptism. We got reason to celebrate on this Lord's Day. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Amen. Listen, if this is your very first time, welcome. 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 Welcome, welcome to the Texas Southern Panhellenic Council. Welcome to Pastor Chris Gray from Atlanta. Welcome. We've come to worship the Lord. We've come to celebrate the Savior. So let's continue to do just that.
Come on and celebrate Jesus all over this house. Celebrate Jesus all over this house. The one who rode into the holy city of Jerusalem, preparing to redeem us from our sins. Come on and celebrate Jesus on a Sunday afternoon. Hallelujah! Somebody shout, Hosanna! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! What a mighty God we serve. How we bless the Lord this Sunday for the wonderful privilege of gathering together as the people of God in the house of God to celebrate God for his goodness and his grace toward us. Looks like somebody's happy to be in church on Palm Sunday 2023. Somebody's glad about it. Yes, sir, my pastor is. Look at my pastor. He's glad about it. Yes, sir. Pastor Loss is happy. Yeah, yeah. Come on and praise the Lord for his goodness. Glory to God. Glory to God. How we celebrate our founder and his presence among us this day. Will you help me thank God for Pastor William Alexander Lawson, the senior founding pastor emeritus of the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Looking so good this Sunday morning. We praise God that his presence is among us this day. And I praise God for every one of you who has joined with us today. It's good to be in the Lord's house. For those who are at your homes, those who are around this world, sharing with us in worship, even from distances far beyond this place. God bless you one and all. We praise God that you've chosen to be with us. Thank God for this music ministry. Haven't they been a blessing to us already? God bless you. They're not even done yet. But praise God for them. Praise God for them. I told the earlier service, after they sang Ride on King Jesus, I told the earlier service that, you know, we're um, fairly dramatic at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Don't tell anybody. I know you never even perceived that. But we're fairly dramatic. And, you know, they have, you, all, you all have a fairly dramatic pastor. Don't tell anybody. But he, he can be a little dramatic every now and then. And so the plan was uh, for, for, you know, the donkey to come down the center aisle uh, while they were singing that song. And my brother, he's all the way in the back of the room, but he's in charge of facilities here at the church. And we in a staff meeting talking about the donkey and how the donkey's going to come in. He's like, there ain't no donkey coming in this church. Ain't no donkey. Ain't no donkey. I said, wait a minute. I'm the pastor. Ain't no donkey coming in this church. And y'all see, ain't no donkey coming in this church because he wasn't, he wasn't trying to be bothered with me. He said, yeah, y'all going to shout. We got to clean it up. Uh, <laughs> if you were with us years ago, years ago, we were in the sanctuary, and it was Palm Sunday years ago, and the donkey, yeah, couldn't hold it until after church. And so, yeah, he said, we're not doing that again. We're not doing that again. So... So the donkeys are outside. Y'all see the donkeys outside when you came in? They are here. They are here. We're dramatic to a point, to a point. Amen. But thank God for all of you who have come today to remember the triumphal entry of the Lord Jesus Christ into the holy city of Jerusalem. It's Palm Sunday, and we're glad about it. This is a great celebrative Sunday in the life of the Christian church. Listen, this is not something that just Wheeler Avenue does. This is not just something that Baptist churches do. Christians everywhere, all around the world, are celebrating the triumphal entry of the Lord Jesus into the holy city of Jerusalem. Every ethnicity, every culture, every race, they're all celebrating that. We saw that very clearly as it came to pass while we were in the Holy Land in, uh, in 2016. We decided to be in the Holy Land on Palm Sunday. And they I found out when we got there that they reenact the triumphal entry every single year and there are people who came from all around the world you see them and they lined the streets of the holy city and we marched into the holy city celebrating jesus christ and people were singing praise songs in their own languages and all around that city that day we were celebrating that jesus christ made his triumphal entry into the holy city of jerusalem i thank god for christians all around the world remembering that we serve a savior like that amen Amen. 
We've got to go back over there pretty soon. You make sure that you go with us when we go, all right? So we can celebrate Jesus even on Palm Sunday next time. This is Holy Week. Holy Week begins today, and we're excited about this significant week. We've been drawing closer to the Lord during the Lenten season, and I hope that you have done that. I hope you find yourself in a better space with God. If not, I want you to try this week to intentionally draw closer to the Lord uh, in prayer, in scripture reading. If you're fasting, we invite you to do that. Whatever spiritual discipline you want to employ during this time, do that so that you can find yourself in a better space with God come Resurrection Sunday than you even are on Palm Sunday. We have our online meditations every week. This week, the Reverend David Roberts, our Minister of Christian Education, has written our Palm, Sun our, our Palm Sunday meditation. Last week, the Reverend Boone wrote a wonderful meditation about Mary Martha, and uh, it was a wonderful time for him, uh, for us to experience uh, how we ought to be feasting at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I hope that you will read all these meditations that all these wonderful clergy persons have written over these weeks of, of uh, the Lenten season. Listen, um, you see me every week, at least most weeks, uh, preaching the gospel here, but I want to thank God for some preaching sisters and brothers right over there and some wonderful men and women who love the Lord and serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. They are serving every single day, every single day, whether you see them or not, they are serving, and I thank God for their service in the Lord's Church, and so many others who are serving all around the Lord's Church. Praise God for you. Monday through Thursday of this week, we'll be at our midday prayer time every day at noon, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Those four days will conclude our midweek prayer time, midday prayer times, and I invite you to join us at noon. Get on the conference call and be led by one of these distinguished clergy persons, and we will be in prayer for the first 10 minutes of that noon hour. And likewise, I want you to read the scriptures that accompany our daily day, day-to-day -day opportunities and experiences during this season. They are online on our website, and you can get them. Now, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday will likewise be the days of our family group, Lord's Suppers. Decades ago, our founding pastor instituted this opportunity for our family groups to get together and simply focus on what the Lord Jesus did in the upper room with his disciples on the very last night of his life. So if you don't know your family group. I want you to call the church, talk to our church receptionist. She'll give to you the information regarding uh, your family group if you don't know it, and then find out when they're meeting and get to their meeting, and let's take the Lord's Supper one with another in our family groups throughout this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then all of us who are able will come to the church at noon on Friday. That's Good Friday. That's the day we commemorate the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we'll be here in the cathedral with the Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church and their pastor, the Reverend Terry Keith Anderson, we invite you to come at noon for worship, and of course, we'll conclude the service at the Lord's table as we commune one with another. There'll be no Bible study this week, but I do want you to be in prayer with me at 6 a.m. on Wednesday morning as we share together in, in prayer at 6 a.m. for those first 15 to 20 minutes of the 6 o'clock hour. Now, our social justice ministry is outside in the atrium, right outside the cathedral doors. They are doing something very significant this week on Tuesday. Tuesday, they will go to Austin, Texas uh, to advocate and to lobby uh, for greater health care reform, greater criminal justice reform, uh, significant uh, education reform, and voter rights reform. We want to do that. We want to do that. I am, I am overwhelmingly troubled by the leadership of our state, and so I want us to make sure that we go to Austin and, sh and let our voices be heard. Oh, our senator's here. Didn't see our senator. I thank God for our state senator, Boris Miles, who is here. He is fighting weekly, monthly. To go ahead and stand up. We appreciate you, sir, for the fight that you fight up there in Austin, Texas. But listen, our social justice ministry needs your signature on these letters that we send, uh, take to Austin on Tuesday. So listen, if you are able, if you're willing to sign one of those letters to show that we need education reform, health care reform, voting rights reform, and criminal justice reform in our state, please go immediately to the, Christ, uh, to the, to the um, atrium of this building and you will find those men and women there to assist you. And please know that today is the very last day to register if you plan to vote in the May municipal elections. And so please go to uh, the social justice table and they will make sure that you can vote before you leave here. If you are eligible to vote, you are sh you should be responsible to vote. And so we invite you to go immediately after this worship service, register to vote, sign up with the, Christ with the social justice ministry, and let's make our voices heard from the third ward community of Houston, Texas. Somebody say amen. 
Amen. I'm almost at my last announcement, but I'm looking for somebody in particular before there she is. Mother Ruth Reed, will you please stand up? Will you please stand up? Wait a minute. I want you to I want you to see. Reverend, did you find out? Okay. This is Mother Ruth Reed. Um, and tomorrow, tomorrow, she'll be 99 years old. I think we ought to celebrate that. I think we ought to celebrate that. I think we ought to celebrate that. Yeah. Yeah. She'll be 99 tomorrow. Yes, she will. Yes, she will. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't she gorgeous? Isn't she beautiful? Isn't she lovely? I'm sorry, that's not for church, but she is, and we praise God for you. We celebrate you. We are grateful that God has blessed our church with you. And you look mighty beautiful today. Listen, I don't know if she is our eldest member. We've had some members in their 100s, and they've passed from labor to ward. I don't know if she's our eldest member, but she's one of them, and she represents us well. Amen. Amen. Now... If you happen to be one of those young bucks born in April uh, because you're not nearly her age, won't you stand up? There they are, jumping up, Don Brown. I see you, Darren. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, Doc, good to see you back. Good to see you back. Praise the Lord. Hey, y'all. Happy birthday to each one of you. Come on, let's sing happy birthday to these precious, both of you. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Bless you, Brother Brown. Let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Many more, Tony. Bless you, boy. Glad to see y'all. Many more. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Our second daughter, Ashley, will be whatever age she's supposed to be next week. Uh, on Resurrection Sunday. She got to celebrate her birthday with Jesus. Lord have mercy. She works the night shift, so she was here at the first service. She said, I'm not staying for another service. I'm going to sleep. So she went home to go to sleep, but we thank God for her and all of you who are celebrating during this precious month of April. Praise God for you all. Listen, it's time to give unto the Lord. It's offering time in the Lord's church. And we're excited about giving. Excited about giving. And so as we give to the Lord this afternoon, we honor the Lord with our substance, with the first fruits, our, our increase. The tithe is holy unto God. And so as we give the tithe this afternoon, it is the first 10% of our increase. That's what God requires of us according to Scripture. And so we bring that first 10% to the Lord's house and we honor the Lord therewith. In addition to that, we give offerings beyond the tithe that speak to our level of commitment to the Lord and His church to the work of the church and to ensure that that work is done with excellence. We give our tithes and our offerings. We give to the debt reduction. and Well, to be sure, we give to the elimination of the debt of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. We are on course to eliminate this debt in an expedited way, and we're excited about that. We've already eliminated the debt on the Christian education complex, and we are soon to do the same in just a few years on this building as well. And all of that is because you've been faithful and generous with your gifts. We could not have done it any other way. And we thank you so much for your faithfulness, for your commitment, for your generosity in this regard. Every week, we speak about four areas of giving. I've spoken to you about three. This week, the fourth is a bit different. We've been touched, heartbroken even, by the tornadoes that have touched down in Mississippi and uh, you may have received an email or a text message from Wheeler Avenue saying that we were going to help our sisters and brothers in Mississippi who have been decimated by that experience. Some of our friends have lost everything. Everything. Not, not a few things, that's uh, everything. And we want to be a blessing to them. And so we sent out a message and we planned over the last week, these friends of mine, senior staff, planned that we would make sure that we would provide missions and mercy to Mississippi. Well, after we did all of our planning, tornadoes touched down in Arkansas and in Illinois. And so we have to expand our plan over the next several days to make sure that we can bless other brothers and sisters in other states. We've already made connections with friends in Mississippi, and so we were able to send our gifts in that direction. Now we'll have to make some contacts in the other states to make sure that we can help other brothers and sisters. I used to preach when I was a 
I was a 20-something year old preacher. I used to preach revival in Wynn, right outside of Wynn, Arkansas. I know the space well. And now all of the, their area has been decimated. So we want to be a blessing to brothers and sisters in Arkansas and even in the Midwest portion of Illinois. So I'm asking that you will take your missions and mercy gift giving to yet another level so we can bless other brothers and sisters. We do not want to disregard the other three areas of giving, but we must pay special attention to this fourth area whereby we might help those who have lost every single thing they have ever possessed or owned. And so as we prepare to do that, we're going to consecrate these gifts. We believe and when we pray, God exponentially expands the gifts that we bring. He does it in a supernatural way. He's been doing it in Wheeler Avenue for 60 and a half years. And we believe he's going to continue to do the same as the days, weeks, months, and years continue to pass. So I'm going to pray. These ushers are moving about us. If you need an envelope, they will be more than delighted to present you with one so that you can put your paper gift in there and then deposit them in the offering receptacles in the narthex and along the walls of our facilities. But if you want to give digitally, you see those digital platforms presented to you there on the screens. But all of it must be consecrated unto the Lord. So let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that every good and perfect gift has come from you. And now as we give back to you what you have first given to us, we pray that you will receive from our hands, our, our glad hands, our grateful hands, what you first placed into them. I may, and I pray that now these glad and grateful hands will be generous hands ready to do the work of kingdom building here at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church and community building in cities and states far beyond this place. Bless now each gift and each giver. Let no one lack as a consequence of what they give. Return to your sons and daughters as only you can so we will always be the testimonies that we can't beat God giving no matter how we try. We do thank you on this Sunday afternoon for victory in our finances. In Jesus' name. Let the church say amen, 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 amen. God bless you, church. Let's give unto our God. The music ministry of the Wheeler Avenue Church is going to bless us under the inimitable leadership of Minister Lewis and all those who serve with him. Receive them with joy as we prepare for the word of God.
about a Savior that came from glory. How he gave his life at Calvary. He did it all just for me. They held him in his hands. They held him in his feet. They nailed him to a cross to die. And all of the while, he was thinking of me. Yeah. Cause in those nails was every mistake I made. The thoughts will fall from my lies. The lies that you took, they were meant for me. Yeah. But you told the Father you would take them instead. You agreed to do it. You agreed to die. You agreed to give your life to save mine. Oh, what a sacrifice you made for me Knowing all that you would have to go through You agree And we thank you, Lord Come on and say it, I heard Yeah, but I'm 
things our God has done. I had about 20 minutes to share a message with you today, probably about 25 to share a message with you this afternoon on this Palm Sunday. Uh, because after this service, after we've gone to the table, I neglected to mention that our precious children will have their Palm Sunday Easter program at three o'clock this afternoon. So I've got to, we got to make sure, yeah, we've got to make sure that we can let the children have this space. We've had an ex experience of worship today that is absolutely phenomenal. I thank God for the kind of worship that we have at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. We always say that we're an inter intentionally intergenerational church. While we adults are worshiping here, our children are worshiping down the hall in the other building, and we're grateful for all that they experience in children's church. I also call it Happy Land. That's Happy Land for them. And they're going to come into the cathedral at 3 o'clock. If you can be here for that, if you can go get yourself something to eat real quick, refresh yourself, and if you can come back, that'd be fabulous. Our children need our support and our encouragement, and we want to provide that for them this afternoon at 3 o'clock. If anybody ever had an Easter speech, you had to remember, you know... You both loved and hated seeing people in front of you. Uh, yeah, and all the folk, when you forgot your lines, they said the same thing. Take your time, baby. Take your time. So we're going to be here this afternoon. And if anybody forgets their lines, what we going to say? Take your time. Sure are. Yes, they are. We're going to be louder than the children. All right. So please come on back here this afternoon if you're able at 3 o'clock. I said all that to say let's get to this message so that the young people can take this building over for their presentation this afternoon. We're not rushing, but we do want to stay somewhat on time today. Is that all right? Amen. Luke chapter 19, the New Testament Gospel of Luke at chapter 19. The New Testament Gospel is recorded by the writer Luke in chapter 19. If you've been with us since we opened up the Lenten season, you know that our Lenten lessons have come from the Gospel of Luke, uh, at least from my presentations uh, on last month, in last month, and now uh, this month as we close out our time together. Luke chapter 19, uh, the entirety of the passage is really begins in verse 28 and ends in verse 48, but I want to read uh, verse 37 through verse 40 in your hearing from the New International Version, and it reads like this. When Jesus came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, Jesus replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Amen. Praise God for his holy word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. King James Version said, if these should hold their peace, the rocks would cry out. If they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. I on this Palm Sunday afternoon, I want to talk from the subject, the God who works things out. The God who works things out. Anybody in church need God to work something out for you? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Anybody in church ever seen God work faith? <laughs> I love this church. See God work some things out for you. Anybody trusting God to work some things out in the days to come? Yeah, our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. And this God of ours knows how to work things out for his people. That's really the story of the first Palm Sunday. That's the story of this text that is before us today. Each of the gospel writers, and there are four of them, each of the four gospel writers tell us the story of Palm Sunday, that initial Palm Sunday. In Matthew's gospel at chapter 21, in Mark's gospel at chapter 11. In Luke's gospel here in chapter 19, in John's gospel at chapter 12, we get the reflection of each of these gospel writers who tell us what happened when they watched the Lord pull all the pieces together, put the details in place to make sure that Palm Sunday, that first Palm Sunday, would be a phenomenal experience to behold. It's the God who works things out, who makes sure that all the details are in place so that when he prepares to bring the Lord Jesus into the holy city of Jerusalem, all eyes will be on him. Please don't miss these details. They are fairly significant to the understanding of this Palm Sunday passage because when Jesus gets ready to come into the holy city of Jerusalem, it is at no ordinary time. He comes into the holy city at Passover time. Passover is a very significant season in the life of the devout Jews because it was at Passover along with a couple of other celebrative times that all of the pious pilgrims would make their way to the holy city of Jerusalem. All of them would cram into the city so they could remember the great things God had done. Passover was one of those remembering times. When you read Exodus chapter 12, you'll find out in the Old Testament that God ensured that uh, his people would be spared, saved. There was the commandment of God to put the, the blood of a lamb on the doorpost of the houses of the people of God. It was on that night that the death angel would come through the land. And if the death angel saw the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, the angel would pass over that house and everybody in the house would be spared, would be saved. And so what we understand from this experience in the life of Judaism is that they remembered what God had done. There's some people in the room today who have some fond remembrances of the things God has done for you. You recognize you wouldn't be where you are or who you are. You wouldn't know what you know or do what you do if it were not for God. So every now and then we are called to remember. And that's what, that's what Passover is all about. And in this moment of Passover, where all of the devout Jews packed the city streets to make their way to Jerusalem, you saw how we reenacted that there in the holy city in 2016. And they're doing it even on this day. For all of those pilgrims from all around the world, all around the diaspora, they would come to the city. To make them, it's as if all of us in the cathedral and those who are in the sanctuary worshiping and those all around Third Ward would cram Scott Street right now just to make sure that we were able to get to the place where all of us were supposed to be. And it's at this moment in time that God decides to use the Passover season to give to his son Jesus a parade on Palm Sunday to let everybody put their eyes on him. Don't miss it. This moment is providentially chosen so that all eyes would be on Jesus, so that nobody would miss him. Everybody would be there to ensure they could see what the Lord was up to and to make sure that it was a spectacle like no other. He comes in on a donkey. <laughs> he comes down the streets on a donkey. He makes sure that everybody sees him. It's a lowly animal. It is a beast of burden. It is not the stallion or the white horse on 
on which an emperor would ride. No, it's a lowly animal, a meek and lowly animal. So now everybody's looking, some with celebration, some with questions, scratching their heads. Why in the world would he come into the city on this animal? And at this time, everybody's looking at Jesus. Did I mention it's the Passover time? I don't know if I mentioned that. You better hold on to that. It might be a pop quiz before this message is over. Everybody's making their way to Jerusalem. They made it there from the diaspora. They came in to see what was going to happen as they remembered what God had done for their ancestors. They remembered how God allowed the blood of the lamb to be sprinkled, smattered on their doorposts. And as a consequence, that night the death angel passed over every house that had some blood on it because we have a bloody religion, you understand. And there's something about the blood that is significant with regard to all of us who know something about the way God works things out. I wish I had some blood-covered folk in here today. Well, God is weaving all the details together. He's working everything out. He's ensuring that everything is going to be just like it needs to be so that everybody can see his son as a spectacle coming through the streets of Jerusalem. And as he makes his way down the Mount of Olives, this when everything unfolds. Now, you got to understand, there's some rationale behind this. There's some context to the text. You've got to understand the background to understand the breakdown. And if you do, it will give you a greater appreciation for the God who works things out. I submit this afternoon, church family, that this God of ours works things out, first of all, so that sinners might be redeemed. Yeah. I said he works things out so that sinners might be redeemed. Now, I heard about 30 people rejoice right there, and there are thousands of us on the campus of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, and all of us fall into the category of folk who have some sin in our lives. So I'm going to try it one more time. And I said that the God of we serve works things out so that sinners might be redeemed. I love preaching to this church, Pastor Lawson. I love it because you understand that all of us stand in need of redemption. All of us stand in need of being reclaimed, reconstituted in the family of God because all we like sheep have gone astray. All of us have gone in ways we should not have gone. As a matter of fact, oh, David, in the Old Testament, that great sweet psalmist of Israel, he says in, in his missive in Psalm 51 that he was born in in sin and shaping in iniquity. That's our testimony. And if you don't take it from David, take it from the New Testament Apostle Paul because the Apostle Paul said he and we, when we would do good, <laughs> evil is always present with us. Is there anybody in here who understands that sometimes you have to make a decision which way you're going to go and sometimes we don't make the right decision. And so we need to be redeemed. The songwriter, the hymn writer said, prone to wonder. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Did you catch that? The hymn writer said that all of us are prone to leave the God we love. We love the Lord, but every now and then we get pulled away and we leave the will and way for, of God for our lives. I need six more people to be a, a, a little more testify, a, testify a little bit more about that because all of us are being pulled away. And whenever you get out of the will and the way of God for your life, whenever you're pulled away, you need somebody to redeem you, bring you back. Yeah, all of us have a sin stain on us. All of us have a sin stain. Don't, don't let all this purple in, in, in this church fool you. Don't let the uniform of these church leaders fool you. Everybody got a sin stain on them, yeah. Everybody, everybody. Look, look at the person in your seat. Say, you too, you too. The person in your seat. I didn't say your neighbor. I said the person in your seat. We quick to turn to your neighbor and say, he talking about you. No, no, no. No, no. Yeah, you. 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 
have a sin stain on us and because of that we've been drawn away by our own lust so says the Bible and we need somebody to come back and get us and from the Old Testament through the New Testament God works out a plan to make sure we can get reclaimed and restored and redeemed. I like that word redeem. If I'm re using my Latin prefixes properly, the prefix re means again. It literally means to deem again, to consider worthy again, to consider profitable again, to consider there's something useful in you again. That when God created you, he had a whole bunch of usefulness in you. We strayed away, but God said, I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to bring you back because I still find use in you. I still find something profitable in you. Somebody ought to thank God that God did not discard you with yesterday's trash. Somebody ought to thank God that God didn't get rid of you because you made the same mistake more than once. I need somebody to thank God. He redeemed us. He redeemed us. He redeemed us. Now look at how God chose to do it in the Old Testament. There was a sacrificial system for redemption. There was blood. I told you we have a bloody religion. There was the blood of turtle doves and pigeons and other animals that would be used for those who were poor. But there was also the blood of the Paschal Lamb. P-A-S-C-H-A-L. The Paschal Lamb. It was the Passover Lamb. Exodus chapter 12, I told you. When you read it, you'll find out that God told them to drain the blood of a lamb and then there would be a scapegoat that would take the sins of the people outside of the city. It would be the one chosen to take the sin of all the people. And the, the high priest would put all the sins on that animal and it would be led out of the city to literally take their sins away. That was the Old Testament system. That was the Old Testament system. But by the time you get to the New Testament, when John looks at Jesus, John chapter 1, he does not talk about a, a pigeon or a turtle dove. He does not talk about any other animal. He looks at Jesus and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Woo. I wish I had 12 people in here who are still excited that your sin gets taken away. On this Sunday afternoon, we ought to rejoice, church, because we have a God who loves us so much that he refuses to let us stay stuck in the mire of our mess. Somebody ought to thank God that we serve a God who loves us so much that he'll keep on hunting us down. He'll keep on seeking us out. He'll keep on our trail until we just say, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. Somebody ought to thank God. He didn't wait till you got to the cathedral to get right. He found you in the club. Anybody in here who is grateful he found you at school, he found you on the corner. Somebody ought to thank God that goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life Woo. I need the people who got saved beyond the church house to celebrate right now I mean, you got saved, you on the street in the street somebody came to your house somebody told you about Jesus at school because a system of redemption had been put in place. Did I mention it was animals that were used in the Old Testament? Animals were used, and the reason why we celebrate during this season is because we understand that redemption is our reward. Wait, can you fathom that? We messed up, and to reward us and bring us back to God's self, God gave us redemption. He said, I'm going to reward, I love you that much. I'm still going to hook you up, even though I know how jacked up you really are. I need, I need, I just need somebody to just testify. Man, if you knew my whole story, you wouldn't believe I'm sitting up in here on a Sunday afternoon. I'm just as jacked up as I can be. But I need seven people who can testify. God looked beyond my fault and saw my need. He deemed me worthy again. He deemed me profitable again. He deemed me useful again. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Listen here. Somebody who came in here down in your spirit because you messed up more times than you wanted to, I need you to tell you, lift up your head, O ye gates. See? Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Your God gave you another chance on purpose. He woke you up to brand new mercies on purpose. His grace is sufficient on purpose. He wouldn't let you die till you got up in here today on purpose. Bless you, Duffy. On purpose. On purpose. I like it. I like it because God works things out so that sinners might be redeemed. That's the whole point of Luke chapter 19 as I make my way to my second and final point. That's the whole point of Luke chapter 19. When you get to Luke chapter 19, you'll find out that Jesus says to a small, short brother named Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was passing by. He climbed up in a sycamore fig tree so he could see Jesus. Jesus told him to come down out of that fig tree because I'm going to your house today. Now, Zacchaeus was the one who defrauded his own people. He robbed his own people. He stole from his own people. He was the chief tax collector, and he would take some off the top to make sure that people would go into poor houses or into poverty, even though he was supposed to be helping them. He would rather help the government. And as a consequence, the Bible says, Jesus said, come down out that tree. I'm going to your house. This boy gets ready to make restitution. God says, I'm not interested in restitution. I'm interested in reclamation, Woo! in redemption. I'm trying to bring you back to myself. And so in verse 10 of chapter 19, Jesus says to him, listen here, man, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. One two three. Oh no 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 don't try it now you should have gotten happy when i said it the first time he said i came to seek and to save what was lost what had strayed away what had wandered from the family he said you're a son of abraham and i came to hunt you down until i got you where i wanted you to be I came to hunt you down till you dusted yourself off and got your act together. I came to hunt you down because you need redemption. The God who works things out works it out so that sinners might be redeemed. But I need to tell you a very similar point to the first point, but this, the second is like unto it, that the God who works things out works it out so that his son might be our redeemer. Okay, it's similar. I said, so his son might be our redeemer. Now, listen, I, I said it like this, because by the time you get to the New Testament, God is not using animals for redemption. <laughs> by the time you get to the New Testament, God says the old system is in the past. I need something new because with the old system, you got to do this over and over and over again. But with the new system, if I use my son, <laughs> I only have to do this once and it's done for all. I, oh, is there anybody in here who is grateful that we don't need a redeemer who has to keep on dying because we got Jesus, the son of the living God, who died one Friday, rose one Sunday. Now he sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for all of us. This is good. I got this, says Jesus. And Jesus does this. That's why John says, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he is the one and only who can, nobody but Jesus could do what was necessary to completely redeem us. Try it over here. Nobody but Jesus could do what was necessary to completely redeem us. Better, try it up here. Nobody but Jesus could do what was necessary to completely redeem us. Eh, nobody but Jesus could do what was necessary to completely redeem us. Because when Jesus does it, he's the only individual, the only human divine one who is sinless 
and it's going to take a sinless individual to handle the sinfulness of all of us. Oh my good God. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again, redeem again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, church, that's why we get happy every first Sunday. That's why we get happy during Holy Week. That's why we get happy on Good Friday. Because the Lord Jesus took our place at Calvary, took all of our sins into his own body and carried them away. And now those of us who've been saved have been covered by the blood. Sins have been washed away. All right. I'm almost done. Can I finish it up? I like this because now Jesus comes to Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives. He's going to descend the Mount of Olives, head into the holy city of Jerusalem. And when he does that, he does so on a donkey. Did I tell you all that? And that donkey has never been written on it. He tends two of his disciples to go get the donkey. And uh, they're like, Jesus, what, they gonna, what we going to tell them when they see us taking that donkey? Say, the Lord needs it. Yes, sir. So they go into the city. They start taking the donkey, untie the donkey. And when they do so, there are folk who ask him, what are you doing with my donkey? Where are you taking my donkey? It says, the Lord needs it. And not another word is spoken. Because when the Lord has need of something, ain't no use in you making excuses about why you can't do it and when you gonna start doing it and let me get my act together before you can use me. You'll never get your act together without the Lord. You need to just go ahead and say, yes, Lord. Woo. I wish I had 12 people in every section who just say, yes, Lord. I came to tell somebody there's no need to make excuses. When the Lord says he needs you, you're not too old, you're not too young, you're not too female, you're not too uneducated or undereducated. If God says I need you and I'm going to use you, here's your response. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They untie that donkey, Pastor Duffy, Dr. Duffy, and when they take that donkey to Jesus, they put their cloaks, their outer garments, they take their outer garments off, put them on top of that donkey, and the donkey begins to ride into the city of Jerusalem with Jesus on his back on top of the cloaks. That cloak was a sign of regard for the one who was coming in into the city. That meant that person meant something special. And so they took their cloaks, and, and, and the John's Gospel in John chapter 12, he says they cut down palm branches. And when they cut down palm branches, they put those in the road. And then they started waving other palm branches according to the other gospels. And they began to shout, Hosanna. Yeah. Hosanna. That word, Hosanna, you've already heard it. Reverend Dr. Barnett, Dr. Quafio, she mentioned it in her first prayer. That word means save now. I need you to save. I need you to get us out of the tyranny of Roman oppression. I want you to save us. I need you to get us from the de de destructive burden that has been placed on our shoulders. They didn't know that Jesus was not just coming to save them from the Roman government. He's coming to save them as their redeemer to get them away from their sinful oppression. And so all of that is wrapped up in that one man named Jesus. Woo, thank you, Jesus. The Bible says he now rides into the holy city. While he's riding into the holy city, here comes now the parade that God has worked out. And while he's riding in, verse 37 says, they begin to praise God with loud voices. They're joyfully praising God with loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. And this is what they say to praise God. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. They are shouting. They are celebrating. They are so happy that nobody can tame them or bring them down. But then there's some haters. Because with as many people as love Jesus, there are likewise people who loathe Jesus. And there are some Pharisees who come to Jesus and say, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Tell them to sit down. Tell them to stop making all that noise. Tell them to stop jumping up. Tell them to stop waving all them branches. Tell them it don't take all that. If you're a Pharisee in the room, listen to what Jesus said. He said, if these hold their peace, the stones will cry out. But some kind of way, I'm going to get my praise. Either from my creatures or my creation. One of these ways, I'm going to get my praise. Now, 
So I wish I had 12 people in here who, who can go old school and say, I ain't going to let no rocks cry for me. That's how they used to say it where I came from. Is there anybody who can testify? I'm not going to let any rocks cry for me because I got my own praise. I got my own testimony. Put a pin right there. We're coming back to it. Did you catch what was going on? The Lord has set up his own parade coming into the holy city of Jerusalem. And while he's coming in, they begin to celebrate. They begin to joyfully praise God. Watch the details with loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. This is what they say. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Watch that word, that phrase there. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Their praise is predicated on their recognition of who he is. They have determined, we know who this one is. All eyes are on him, and we know this one well. He is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. This is a quote, kind of a quote, from Psalm 118, verse 26. But the gospel writer Luke puts his own spin on it. Luke puts a spin on it that says, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Psalm 118 literally says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But Luke wants you to know, he's not just redeemer. He is also the one who will reign forever and ever. Amen. Oh, that was a good place to look. Amen. You put a smile on your face right there because he's not just the redeemer. He's also the one who reigns forever and ever. Amen. I like this church because what's interesting to me, Reverend Jerry, is that Pilate is the king on the throne. But all these people are saying blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Because Luke said in chapter 1 that he's going to sit on the throne of his father David and he's going to reign over Judah forever. There's some kings that come and go. <laughs> but I wish I had 10 or 12 people in here who can get happy that Jesus reigns forever. I don't know what's going to happen Tuesday with the indictment, but I'm so glad that they finally got their hands on him. There's some people who come and go. But I need somebody to testify that Jesus still sits high and he looks low and he reigns forever. Oh yes, he's going to have to die. Oh yeah, he's going to go through Saturday, Sunday rather, Sunday through Monday and then Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday and Friday he's going to die. But his death will not be like any other death. We've been lamenting that Monday, all those six people died in Nashville. Nashville and the nation has been crying because of an unnecessary death. Because our legislators refuse to put common sense law gun reform on the books of this nation. And I'm going to say it till everybody hears it. It makes no sense for this to be the 367th school shooting since 1999. When in the world are we going to make up our minds? that our babies are more important than our rifles. <laughs> 367 since 1999. I made that stat in the first service and I thought it was 366 mass shootings in total. Reverend Rep. Johnson told me between services, it's just school shootings. This doesn't count the synagogues and the churches and the clubs and the malls and the movie theaters. That's just in school. And we sitting around, no, it's not, it's not the guns that kill people. It's people that kill people. Well, the people got the guns in their hands and we letting them do it. All right. Unnecessary death. Unnecessary death. Tornadoes, unexpected deaths in three states. Unexpected deaths. And on Tuesday, we'll commemorate the unnecessary, unexpected death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was assassinated on April 4th, 1968. All of those are unnecessary, unexpected deaths. <laughs> but when Jesus dies, oh, this is a most necessary death. Because none of us could be reclaimed. None of us could be re-brought back into the family of God had it not been for that Friday afternoon. Now, I know it's Palm Sunday, but can I give you a preview of coming attractions? Because on Friday, he's going to die. <laughs> and when he dies, he dies for the sin of all of humanity. They're going to put him in a borrowed tomb. Can I go ahead and tell the story? Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Saturday, he's going to be in the grave. But early, Sunday morning, he's going to get up with all power in his hand. And he shall reign forever. Sorry to mess up 
the story. Come on back Sunday, you'll hear it again. It's recognition of who he is. But in, in lack of recognition, there's also reverence. They put their cloaks in the ground. They put their palms in the ground. And they begin to wave the palms. They begin to say, Hosanna. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory and peace all over this place. And now, when they say that, church, they begin to revere God because they recognize that this is no ordinary somebody. There's recognition. There's reverence. But there's also rejoicing. Did I tell you they were rejoicing? Your Bible says, verse 37, that all the disciples began to praise God joyfully with loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Did you catch it? All the disciples. But nobody saying, well, you know, I'm not like that. I'm, I'm introspective. I'm more cognitive. No, no. The Bible said all the disciples hey, began to joyfully praise God with loud voices of all the miracles they had seen. They're waving branches, they're putting their cloaks in the ground, and they're praising God. I wish I had 12 people in this church now. I hope you're over there in the sanctuary rejoicing now. Don't let this moment pass you by. I need somebody to rejoice because you know who your God is. Whew. I need somebody to rejoice because you know God works things out. I need you to rejoice because all things work together for the good of them who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. I need somebody to rejoice now because you recognize that God is still high and mighty. He still sits high and looks low. He still has all power in his hand. But watch the text, church. They are rejoicing because of their reflection. I told you they are praising God for all the miracles they had seen. Now, I need seven people in every section. Now, I don't need everybody, but I need seven people in every section who's ever seen God do something for you that you could not have done for yourself. I need the people who've seen God do some things in 2023 that nobody but God could have done. Don't even go back to 2022. I need you to start on January 1st. Make your way through February. Go on through March. Find yourself on April 2nd and open up your mouth and say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I never would have made it. Is there anybody who feels like rejoicing for a little while? My time is out. The clock says I'm done. But I need some people in that balcony, some people in that choir stand, some preachers over on my side. I need some musicians who still love the Lord, who can help me rejoice over what God has done. Rejoice that you've seen him open doors. Rejoice that you've seen him make a way. Rejoice that you've seen him heal. That you've seen him restore. Rejoice that you've seen him pay your bills. Rejoice that you've seen him keep you in your right mind. Is there anybody in here who can help me rejoice? Because you know that God's been good to you. For every mountain, he brought you over. For every valley, he's seen you through. For every blessing, somebody shout hallelujah. For this I give you praise. Don't look at somebody else's life right now. Just think about your own life and begin to testify. If it had not been, oh, 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 if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side working things out, I don't know where I would be. But since I'm here, and since I know what I know, since I've seen what I've seen, please excuse me, but I feel like giving him glory. I feel like giving him praise. I feel like giving him honor. He's worthy. And he worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same he let everything is that what you say let everything let everything that had breath Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you,
figure it out. He's already working it out. church just took a victory lap. His wife Kristen has been in the hospital since last Sunday. While we've been worshiping, they freed her to come home. That's why we believe he works it out. Can you praise God for somebody else? Can you praise God for somebody else's family? Can you bless God for what he's doing in her life, their life? Miracle! This praise is because God is blessing you, Kristen and Marie Johnson. We praise it in here because God is blessing you over there. assignment was to come remind somebody that you serve a God who works things out. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do.
God, I come on your beh on behalf of your people this afternoon. They didn't know what you told me to preach, but they sure needed to hear it today. Because we needed to be reminded that you painstakingly worked the details of our lives out so that we could have victory on the other side of our adversity. Thank you so much for working things out in our homes, on our jobs, in our bodies, in our finances, in our relationships. Thank you for working things out in our minds, in our spirits. Thank you for working things out in this city, in this nation, in this world. We don't know how you're going to do it, but we trust that you're working it all together for the good of them who love you and are the called according to your purpose. Will you give your people the strength to endure while you work it out? Give your people the strength to believe you even when it gets difficult and daunting. Give your people the faith to hold on even when trouble is all around us. Give us the tenacity, even the audacity to believe that you're working it out even when our eyes are filled with tears. You're working it out even when we don't have the strength to get up out of our beds. You're working it out even when nobody will hug us and pat us on the back. You're working it out because you have plans for us. Those plans are to prosper us, not to harm us. Give us hope and the future. Work it out, God. Work it out. 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 Somebody came to church needing you to work something out. May we go home believing that you're working it out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so we have praised you because you're worthy. We've rejoiced because you're worthy. The moment we're going to go to this table and remember what you've done for us. But even before we get there, we pray that you'll save now. Somebody needs to know you as Savior, as Redeemer. So save somebody in this church house, whether in the cathedral or the sanctuary. Somebody's at home. Somebody's in another space watching us on a, on a device. Save now. Thank you that you're able to save us wherever we are. And we give you glory for it now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you that somebody's life is about to be changed for the rest of their lives. Because they're going to give their lives to you. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Will you clap your hands like you believe God is a great God? Hallelujah. 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 Somebody needs to know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. Somebody needs to know that this Savior of ours is available to every one of us who calls upon his name. Nick Millers are going to come stand with me. Leaders are going to stand all around the, the cathedral and the sanctuary. The Reverend Roberts is going to stand there with his hands extended, letting you know that you are welcome here, whoever you are, from whatever background you've come. You're welcome in this place. If you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, that would be the best decision you ever make in your entire life. When you join Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, it's another great decision. We're going to help you to become the disciple that all of us are striving to become, disciples who please the Lord and follow him in all of our ways. Here comes a gentleman bringing that precious young boy with him. Come on down this aisle. We're excited about your future. Here comes my brother from my right-hand side. Here comes my sister and a family coming back there. God bless you. Come on, come on, come on. Make way for these who need to come. Let them cross over you if necessary. 
God bless you. We're going to celebrate while they're walking. Come on, look at that sister coming down the center aisle. There's another sister coming behind her. Come on and praise God for them. If you're in the balcony, come on downstairs. We're waiting for you. We have room for you. We're expecting you. We've been looking for you, man. God bless you, brother. Welcome to the family. God bless you. Hey, my sister, my brother, God bless you. Excited about your future. Bless your young daughter. I praise God for your, your decision today. God bless you. Bless you, ma'am, as you walk down the street. My brother, my sister, welcome to the Wheeler Avenue family. You just made a great decision. I can't wait to see how it unfolds in your life. Who else needs to come? You should be walking in the sanctuary if you need to make a decision. Arms are extended to you to come even right now. Whosoever will, let him let her come. We're going to sing just about a verse and a half of this song. And while we're singing, if you need to make the decision for the Lord Jesus Christ, just step up from wherever you are. Step out of the aisle that's closest to you. They're moving in the sanctuary. Praise the Lord. Step out of the aisle closest to you. Walk down this way. And we're going to be excited about the future that God has in store for you. Whosoever will, let them come. Sister, come on. Brother, come on. Our arms are open wide to receive you even right now. Come on down that center aisle. We see you walking. Praise God for you. Praise God for your decision. Excited about your future. You got a long life to live for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise God for you. Can't wait to see what God does in your life in the days to come. Praise the Lord. Who else is coming? My sister's moving in the balcony. Praise God for her. Please don't move unless you're coming this way. Unless you're coming this way. Don't want to distract. Don't want to disturb anybody else who needs to make a decision on this Sunday afternoon. Who else needs to come? Sister, am I waiting for you, brother? Am I waiting for you? Make your way, even right now. Make your way right now. In the sanctuary, start moving. Those saints are excited to see you walk down one of those aisles in the sanctuary. And we'll be excited here in the cathedral as well. Whosoever will, let them come. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Talk about it. Why? Why? For the good. Yes, man. Yes, man. There it comes. There she comes. There she comes. Yonder she comes. Here they come. Come on, wave that palm branch while you're walking. We praise God for this wonderful experience. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, for the good. for your decision. Come on, come on. God bless you, sis. God bless you, brother. We're excited about your future. Excited about your future. I see you coming down that balcony. Come on, family. We're waiting on you. I see you. I see you. The Lord is moving, church. We ought to be excited about it. Come on, sis. We're waiting on you. Yeah. Oh my God. Whatever comes. It's good. It's listen, listen. There's some who are coming as candidates for baptism. You said, Pastor, I've never been, never been saved. I don't know what saved means. I need to be saved. Now, if, you, if that's going to make my life worthwhile, I want to be that. But secondarily, there are those who say, I need a church where I can grow and become. And so that second invitation is for those who need to grow in another church. So if you're saved, but you need a church where you can be developed, we invite you to come. Come on, brothers. We're waiting on you. Praise God for you. Here's the third invitation. Here comes some right back there. Come on. Will you celebrate with them while they're walking this way? Praise the Lord. We have what is known as watch care because there's some people who are just in the city of Houston, in the area for a limited time. Some are in school. They're going to be here four, five, six years. There are others who are have a temporary job assignment. And so we have what is known as watch care. Literally means we'll watch over you and care for you while you're here. And then we'll send you back to your place of origin with joy. Celebrate them while they're walking. 
So if you're only here for a limited time, but you say, Pastor, I need a church while I'm in Houston, while I'm in this area, we'll watch over you and care for you while you're here. Our counselors will tell you more about that. But if you need to respond to that invitation, I need you to walk down right now. Come on, right now. This is your opportunity to make your way. I see you coming to the balcony. God bless you, my dear friends. I praise God for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to wait on you to come on down, down, down that, that balcony staircase. And we're going to keep on celebrating that God is adding to the church those who are being saved. Praise the Lord. Look towards somebody, says the pastor waiting on you. Look towards somebody, ask him, is the pastor waiting on you? If they say no, say praise the Lord. If they say yes, say hey, I'll walk with you if you don't want to walk by yourself. If they don't say anything, ask them again until you get an answer. We respond to one another in church. Amen. Praise the Lord for these, these two adults bringing that baby. Praise the Lord. That's a great, great way to have a family in the Lord's church. Come on, bring that sister on down this aisle. Here they come. I knew there was some more waiting for me to invite you personally. I'll give you a personal invitation. Praise the Lord. Who else? Who else? Come on, sis. I see you coming down the balcony staircase. There they come. God bless you, sisters, as you walk down there. They're getting up right over there. Come on and praise God for them. Some people just need a little encouragement. That's what we do in church. Encourage them. Encourage them. Encourage them. God bless you. So proud of your decision. Proud of your decision. Making decisions that will impact you greatly for the rest of your life. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Church, help me celebrate all who have responded to the invitation on this Sunday afternoon. Hallelujah. Look at the sanctuary. Look at the sanctuary. Here in the cathedral, they have responded to the invitation. And we praise God for that. Listen, to all of you who stand here with me in the cathedral and all who stand with the Reverend Roberts in the sanctuary, welcome to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I'm so grateful that God has made it your decision to come to this place called Wheeler Avenue where you might grow and become the disciple that the Lord wants you to be for his glory. I am excited to serve as your pastor and all of these church folk around here are excited that, you're, that you are their new sisters and brothers and we are grateful that our family just got larger to include each one of you. Come on church, celebrate with all of our family members. Welcome to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. We got, come on, we waiting on you, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on down that center aisle, we waiting on you, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. For my good. Yeah. God's working things out for you, man, for you, man, for you, man, for you, man. Come on and celebrate. Do you see these young men standing down here? You see these young women standing down here? You see these older brothers and sisters standing out here? Intergenerational church. Come on, celebrate. Celebrate. Praise the Lord. Who's leading? Reverend Dodd. Look at that hand. That woman of God has her hand raised. You're going to go up those steps right behind her, and she's going to take you to the new member induction room, and we're going to celebrate with you as you walk right behind Deacon Reverend Moses. God bless you, one and all. Praise the Lord for each one of you. Welcome to the family, brothers. Glad you're here. I'm excited about your future. You hear me? Welcome to the family. Sisters, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are glad you are here. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Coming to the table of the Lord now. To remember the sacrifice of Jesus. Praise the Lord. All those in the sanctuary who are being led to our new member induction room, God bless you. 
Thank you so much for your decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ here at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. God is up to something. Yay! Yeah. And we ought to be happy about it. Ought to be happy about it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. As we come to the table of the Lord this afternoon, we remember the sacrifice of our Savior. Our leaders are going to come stand all around the church houses today to help us to remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. As we come to this table this afternoon, we are reminded that the whole purpose of Passover was to remember what God had done for their ancestors. The whole purpose of the Lord's Supper is to remember what God has done for us. He has redeemed us from our sins. And so we come to this table celebrating, remembering that the redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. So to God be the glory for this moment in time. As we come to this table, many of you have already received your elements. If you've not yet immediately following our chairman's prayer, we will ensure that every person in the Lord's house has elements of the Lord's Supper. On the very last night of his life, as we reenact that last night, today being Sunday, Palm Sunday, on Thursday, in traditional church language, we call it Maundy Thursday, from that Latin word mandatum, mandate. The Lord gave a mandate that we would love one another. While he gave that mandate that we would love one another, he told them, after he had begun to teach them that when they come to this, this moment to eat the bread and drink the wine in remembrance of him. I had a funny feeling they didn't fully understand all that was happening in that moment. But now we on the other side of the cross can look back and thank God that Jesus took his disciples into that upper room, took of the bread and said, this is my body broken for you, wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquity. Then take of this cup, drink all of it. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. This cup represents my blood of the new covenant. And every time you do this, you do so in remembrance of me. Let's bow our heads as we consecrate these gifts through the prayer of our chairman. Deacon Hicks, and as he prays, we remember what the Lord has done for us. Church family, let us pray. God, our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity today to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Father God, that before the foundations of the world, you were working it out for our good. For Jesus, the precious Lamb of God, takes away the sins of the world, he decided to die. Yeah. He, agreed, he agreed, though the cup was bitter, yeah. he agreed to die in our place, yeah. that we who are sinful yeah. might live. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we remember his death. We pray, Lord God, that you bless these elements here on this table as we reenact that faithful night when Jesus was betrayed we take this bread that represents his broken, battered, bruised body for our sins, and we take the cup that represents his shed blood for the remission of sin. Yes, yes. It still washes, still, still cleanses, yes. still washes away all of our sins. You, and so, God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Bless these elements for our use. And then, Father God, consecrate us for your service as we look forward to what this week holds, as we continue to remember Jesus. It's in his name we pray with thanksgiving, great expectation for the amazing things you will continue to do. Amen. If you've not yet received your elements, won't you just slip up your hand there, leaders, servants of the Lord's church who are available to you even right now. Please leave your hand in the air until they have served you. And while they're serving you, we're going to sing this great song of the church over the last several years we've been singing it with joy you thought i was worth saving worth redeeming yeah redeeming again yes lord
it is to come to this moment in worship where we can remember the sacrificial work of the Lord Jesus Christ all of us needed the gift of salvation that only Jesus Christ could provide and we're grateful in the words of another songwriter he decided to die just to save me to God be the glory for that Permit me in this sacred moment, and I apologize for doing it. I should have done it earlier. To just recognize the dean of the chapel at uh, Wiley College. Dr. Cecil Duffy is here. He's there, and I praise God. Cecil Duffy, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your presence among us today. Praise God for you. You've been with us both services today, and we thank God for his presence today. And we thank God for the presence of the Lord our God who is in this place right now. For in his presence there is fullness of joy. We've experienced that joy all this afternoon, this morning and this afternoon. And I'm so grateful that the Lord decided to show up among us this afternoon. To show us a glimpse of his glory. He did that that Friday afternoon when he died. To prove that his love for us was so great. The Bible says that God demonstrated his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. His body was broken, beaten, battered, and bruised to prove his love for us. As we hold this representation, this symbol of his broken body, let's eat the bread together. We hold in our hands a symbol of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. As we prepare to receive it today, we're grateful that blood cleanses us from all of our sin. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, how we thank God. 
that our sins have been washed away. And as we partake of the cup today, let's do so in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ who has taken all of our sins away. Let's drink together the cup of the Lord. Gracious God, we do give you thanks because you're an awesome God. You're an amazing God. You're the God who works things out. And we thank you for it today. Now, as we prepare to leave from this place, you know what we need in the days to come. You know we need you to work some stuff out. Here's our vow to you today. We're going to trust you. We're going to believe that you know what's best for us. And we're putting our lives in your hands. And we're going to follow you and joyfully praise you as you continue to show us miracle after miracle. Show us your abundant power and your amazing grace. Be with us now as we head farther into the month of April. Help us to be lights in this dark world. Help us to live better for you in this month than we did in the previous months so that your glory might be revealed through our lives. And men, women, and children might see us and want to know you and live for you even as we do. We thank you so much for Palm Sunday, 2023. And may we live our lives joyfully praising you for all the miracles you let us see. It's in the strong name of the Lord Jesus that we leave this place believing you for great things and doubting you for absolutely nothing. Will you increase our faith now that we've heard your word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. May our faith be increased so we will trust you even the more in April than we did in the month of March. In Jesus' name we pray with great thanksgiving and expectation. Let all of God's people together shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let the church say amen. 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 amen, amen, amen. We're about to leave from this place. Our ushers are going to guide us from the Lord's house to our various respective locations. Listen, I want you to follow the directions of our ushers, please. They are trained to guide us and to keep us disciplined and in order. So please follow their directions, starting in the balcony at the rear of the Lord's house. Those in the sanctuary may depart as the ushers give leadership. We're going to go part from this place singing and celebrating, even as they did from that upper room on that Thursday evening. Let's sing together this great song of the church. And as we go, if you're able to be back in an hour, we'd love to have you back here to share with our precious babies. And then Family Group Lord's Supper, Monday through Thursday. Good Friday worship on Friday. Resurrection Sunday, Sunday morning, 8 o'clock at 11.30. Go in peace, my father's children. Down where my Savior died. was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory, glory. Glory to his name.